Hello, it's Rafael Gutierrez, and today I'm gonna do a martial art video. I'm still trying to get all the uh, pieces of, so you can actually go through the lab manual and understand what I'm trying to do. And I actually have found that a lot of the stuff that I do cover in the lab manual really do come back when you deal with the martial arts. What I mean is, by knowing that the flexors of the fingers are, you know that if you make a fist too tight, you actually can cause your uh, punch to actually go slower. If you remember, you have the medial condyle, and you have a lot of the muscles here that help contract all these areas coming off the humerus. So if you're too tight, you actually stop the movement of your elbow. Now, today's question is from uh, John Tinnan, who uh, is has his own channel, uh, Practical Karate. I actually would tell you, uh, look at it, watch it. It's actually has a lot of great things. I've watched it a lot myself. It's actually kind of uh, funny, something that I was thinking about. Most of us who watch other people's who have our own channels, who uh, a lot of people who I respect, uh, we'll watch other people's channels and we'll mention them because no man is really alone. We're, we all are trying to get to the same thing, which is making an art, uh, making our own art the best we can make it. We do take, we do talk to each other. Uh, I do uh, Shogun Ryu, John, he actually, his tradition art is mostly Shotokan. I actually will look at other arts and I'm sure everyone else does. I will go into Thai boxing to see what they do and uh, pretty much try to see what works and what doesn't for me. Now, what works for me won't work for everyone else, I understand that. I figure by looking at everything, we can end up finding certain things that work. And what we find a lot of times, I think, is that we tend to agree on more than we disagree on. I'm, a lot of times people get stuck on, well, the history of karate is this and this. Well, at the end of the day, though, what we're really trying to do is, yes, we're trying to preserve an art, but we're also trying to make sure that our our art functions. And that's, that's one of the most important things. Now. In the video that he was asking about, someone was talking about keeping the wrist completely locked and why it's a benefit when punching. Now, I don't have a heavy bag. What I do have is my own makiwara, which is what I'm going to use. And I'll, you, I'll show it to you so you can see the quality and what, what's actually happening. This is my makiwara. And what you'll see is you notice that there's a stand to it and that it pretty much is two, two, uh, at the base is two two by fours and it goes up to just one. and I will never get it to hit the wall, it's too much. But I'm gonna, as I do these things, I think you're gonna be able to see what I'm talking about. And hopefully, hopefully you'll understand why the uh, tightness is not so important. So, a lot of times when we hit makiwara, people actually tell you hit and tighten. Now, the thing is this, when you have a makiwara like this, as you hit, it moves back and then comes forward. The force that goes back is gonna spring back the other way. So if I hit and I stay here, I'm gonna end up taking the damage, not just on my knuckles, but it's gonna go through the elbow. Now, how tight does my wrist have to be? Well, if it's lined up perfectly, I can actually do it relatively soft here. And I don't have to have a really tight fist. I can just hit and let it hit. And by keeping it almost, by actually hitting, you can see that you are getting here. Now, some people say, well, yes, but this is a target which is flat. Now, if I'm coming over here, I actually will hit here and then rotate. So here, you can see, nothing happens to my wrist if I'm at the angle. Here, again, you can see there's nothing, nothing that happens to my wrist. It's an angle. And so you can actually come to a lot of different areas. Uh, here you have, so one of the big things is we actually talk, a lot of people talk about, well, you know, you want to tighten your hip. So when you hit, it comes back. Now, here's the thing, if I tighten, I'm not putting any more pressure in there. If you notice, it doesn't move that much more. The, what ends up really happening, what's interesting is the, the lining up is important, but you don't have to be tight. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine uh, named Chris, who is also an other martial artist. Uh, funny how we end up finding that most martial artists end up becoming friends with a lot of other. And what I ended up finding is, at one point everyone started, when you punch, tighten for power. If you take physics, where there's a collision, and that's where the the damage is going to happen on the initial hit of the collision. Afterwards, you can just almost follow it in. And you're not transferring any more power. All you're doing is moving because it's attacked. What I mean is that hitting and sticking doesn't really matter uh, when you're actually trying to do damage. Actually, it doesn't do anything but keeps you out there. And if you watch all the different types of martial arts, and this is what I think is really important. If you watch boxing, they don't hit stick, hit stick. They continue to hit. Usually people have found boxers do have harder punches. There is a difference in training, that's fine, but yes, the sticking doesn't seem to have much of 
in the way of developing power. So why do we do, why do a lot of people teach you to tighten and stick? Like I said, you can actually put much more loose hand. Same thing, doesn't really, doesn't really affect you that much, as much. If I'm actually hitting with this part right here, the meaty part, something hard, that may actually uh, do, may need a little more, but the muscles that actually cause the, it's called abduction, it are, of the fingers are here instead of over here. So just by moving your finger out a little, you actually can make the blades harder so you can hit and not worry too much about breaking it. So the question I actually will ask is, why do a lot of people tell you to hit and stick and tighten everything just at the point of impact? And that's actually the thing that's interesting. If I tighten at the, punch, at the point of impact, what actually ends up happening is hand stops. So I'm not gonna do the damage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prevent from doing damage. So I'm not gonna do the damage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prevent from doing damage. And there is where you actually find the important. If you wanna let it hit and not hit, you tighten right before point of impact and it stops the movement of your punch. Which means instead of hitting here, when you hit, you're actually stopping. Why that would be important is if you're doing a no, no contact sparring. So if I want to hit and be able and not hit my partner, you actually stop right before you actually hit, or right as you hit, and there's you don't transfer any motion. You don't transfer the force. So in fact, actually the tensing at the end is not to develop more power, but to keep the power from going into the target, your opponent in a point sparring match. I hope you enjoy this and hope it works out for you. Goodbye.